Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Reduce stutters in Microsoft Flight Simulator by using an auto FPS tool. Which one should you use? I don't know, but we're gonna go over all of them coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. Before we jump into the video, I first want to discuss what is an auto FPS tool and why you may want to use one. At its most fundamental, auto FPS will adjust your level of detail settings accordingly to help achieve a consistent frame rate. The tool will detect your simulator is running below a desired frame rate and automatically adjust the level of detail to achieve a smooth and pleasant experience. In today's video, I will be going over the top three auto FPS tools that we have available to us in the market. I will be arranging each of these in order from easiest to hardest, or in terms of settings, the least amount of settings to the most amount of settings available. Now, for anyone asking which one should you use, I'm going to tell you the same thing as I tell everyone. Try them all. Everyone will experience a different outcome. So what may work for me may not work best for you. Now also keep in mind that each of the tools that we're gonna go over today will perform well in PC or monitor mode or in VR. Lastly, I will not go over any download or installation for each of these tools. There's been many other videos done on that. However, I would recommend to read all of the documentation on the developer's websites as they do explain all of the functionality in each of their tools. The purpose of this video is more so to do an FPS tool roundup so that you can have all the information in one location. So with that out of the way, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back to you. If you enjoyed today's content and found it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button it is greatly appreciated. All the links for these tools will be down below in the description, so be sure to check that out. The first tool that we're gonna go over today is the Auto FPS tool, and this will be the easiest Auto FPS tool to use out of all of them that we're gonna be going over. So when you first open this up, at the very top, we will have some connection status indicators. Once the sim is open and running, all of these should be lit up in green. Below that we have some sim values and this is going to be all the information that is coming from the simulator itself. Now because I don't have the sim running, none of this information is going to pop up, but that's really not going to affect this tutorial. Below that we have some general information and here's where we can set a target FPS. Now the question arises of what target FPS should I input? Because obviously if your PC normally only runs about 20 to 30 FPS, setting this to 60 or 70 FPS is really not going to do anything for you. The object here with all of the tools we're gonna to go over is to get an average FPS, whether you're in monitor or in VR, and then you're gonna set your target FPS probably a little bit lower than your average. The reason for that is if you set your target FPS for what your average FPS in the sim is, then it will never increase your level of detail because you're never really exceeding that FPS point. I hope that makes sense. Once you have entered your target FPS, with this application, that's all you really need to do, and it will take over. Now, for those of you who want a little bit more of customization, we also have that available too by ticking on the Use Expert options. In the Expert section, we now have a bunch of different settings that we can tweak. At the very top, we have our FPS tolerance, and this is going to be a percentage based of when the application is going to start making adjustments. Below that, we have our Altitude Terrain Level of Detail Base. This is by default set at 1,000 feet. Next is Terrain Level of Detail Minimum. By default, this is set at 50. On the right-hand side, we can select our Terrain Level of Detail Minimum, either on the ground and for landing. If you tick this box when you're on the ground or when you're coming in for landing, 
it will automatically set your terrain level of detail to 50. Your average descent rate default is set to 2000. Again, all of these settings you can play with. Below the average descent rate is our terrain level of detail maximum. And of course, this will be the maximum that we are going to allow the tool to increase our level of detail. We also have an option to decrease our cloud quality. So if you tick this box, we can set a cloud recovery terrain level of detail. So that means once we recover back to 100% level of detail, it would then increase our cloud quality back to normal or back to wherever we have it set to. We also have an option to automatically control our object level of detail. And this is going to be very similar to our terrain level of detail above. We have our object base. We have our altitude base, our object level of detail at the top, and our altitude level of detail at the top. Some of you may be looking at this going, wait a minute, this looks a little goofy. So the purpose of the object level of detail here is as you increase your altitude, you do not need as much object level of detail because we can't see wind socks, we can't see signs on the runways anyway, we're too high up in the air. So what this tool will do is decrease the object level of detail once we get closer to our top of altitude. All right, so that's going to finish us up with the auto FPS tool. If you have any questions about this one, let me know down below in the comments section. The next tool that we're going to go over is Smooth Flight. Now for this one, I chose to start at the developer's website because there is a couple notes here about this application. As you'll notice under the notes section, there are a couple pieces of software that we need in addition to the Smooth Flight application. One of those is the Moby Flight Connect app, as well as Microsoft Net Version 7. One of the things about the other two tools that we're going to go over today, when you install those applications, they also require the same bits of software as Smooth Flight. The difference is when you install either the Auto FPS tool or the Dynamic LOD, those two tools will automatically install Moby Flight as well as the Microsoft Net Version 7 runtime. So, what I would recommend to do before you actually install this tool and try it is to install one of the other tools first so that it will download and install all the necessary ancillary applications that will also be needed for the Smooth Flight application. So now that I have that out of the way, let's jump into the application itself. Starting the Smooth Flight application is going to be a little bit different. We're not going to have an icon on your desktop like the other two applications because they are going to be installed on our system. This one, on the other hand, is not going to be installed on our system, and we're going to be running it from a portable folder. All right, for your first time opening the application, this is what you should be left with. So let's start on the left-hand side first. Similar to the Auto FPS tool, we have some sim telemetry data that will show our FPS and our level of detail. We also have a little tick box here that if we're going to be using VR to tick this box. At the very top left of the application, we have a little tick box here, and this is so we can minimize all of this information, so we can have a little pop-out that we can display anywhere on our screen. We have several different menus at the very top, and under each of these menus, we have some adjustment settings. Below the adjustment settings, we have some great information about what each of the settings will do. In the first menu under FPS, this is where we will set our desired FPS range. The top slider will adjust our lower FPS range. So again, we want to make sure that we set the lower range below what our average FPS is. So if we're averaging 35, we would probably want to set our lower range to about 30. You might ask, well, wait a minute, the upper range is also changing when I manipulate the slider. To adjust the upper range of the FPS, that is where the dead zone slider comes into play. If I manipulate the dead zone slider, 
you will now see the upper FPS range change. At the very bottom, we have a smoothing slider, and this is to adjust just how fast the application is going to make changes to our level of detail. The higher you go on the smoothing, the longer it's going to take to make changes. The lower you go on the smoothing, the faster it will make changes, but could also introduce stutters. The next menu we're going to take a look at is limits. Now again, this is all going to be personal preference, and I mainly fly in VR. So my settings might be very different from what you're going to have yours. You'll just have to test for yourself and see what your upper limit could be for your system. Once you go over a certain point, your VRAM is probably going to be maxed out. Your main thread will probably start to have issues. These are all things that you want to take a look at in the FPS counter in Microsoft Flight Simulator. The next menu at the top is our landing mode. This is a new mode that they have implemented here that when you check the landing mode enable, once you get down to your desired altitude that you set, it will automatically switch to your terrain level of detail that you have set as well, as well as your object level of detail. Now we also have an option here to freeze changes. If you enable the freeze changes, what this will do is this will not force these values once you hit this altitude. Instead, it will use whatever your values currently are as a threshold is crossed. The next menu at the top is taxi mode. So, of course, this is going to be when you're on the ground taxiing around. We can keep our terrain level of detail very low and our object level of detail at whatever you need so that you can see the signs, the wind socks, and things like that. The last menu at the top is the tweaks menu. These two settings here are experimental settings. Now, you can mess with these if you like, but what I've noticed here is when I do move these around, when I reload the application, these go back to default. So I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that, but that's just what happens for me. At the top of the tweaks, we have a terrain versus objects. And this is going to balance out what it's going to manipulate first to help give you a smoother gameplay. Now, of course, your terrain level of detail is going to make the biggest improvement. So turning this more towards terrain versus objects will adjust your terrain level of detail first before it starts adjusting your object level of detail. Below this, we also have an option that we can auto set loan limits by using our AGL level. I've never messed with this, but if you do, let me know what you use down below in the comments. Okay, so that's going to finish us up with the smooth flight application. If you have any comments or questions about this one, please let me know down below in the comments section. The last FPS tool that we're going to go over today is the Dynamic LOD Reset Edition. This, in my opinion, is the most customizable tool, but it's going to take some insight from you as the user, and you really need to know your PC and what your PC is capable of within Microsoft Flight Simulator. At the very top, we have a connection status, just like on all the other tools. These will light up in green once you have connected to your SIM. Below this will give us our SIM values, so this will be the telemetry data from the SIM. Below this is the general section, and here's where we can start making some adjustments. We have several different profiles here that we can choose, one through six. Now you can set these profiles up for either VR, you can set them up for PC or monitor. You can set them up for commercial or GA. It's all up to you and how you want to set this up. But just know that when you use either VR or monitor, it will auto switch between the two. So it's adjusting the correct settings in Microsoft Flight Sim. Next to the profile, we have cruise LOD updates. Below this, we have an LOD step max on increase and decrease. What this application will do as we are increasing our altitude or decreasing our altitude, it will recognize either the ascent or descent 
and we'll start adjusting our terrain level of detail in small increments so that it doesn't make a stutter or give us any sort of glitch on our screen. By default, this is set on five. I found that by changing this to two gave me a much smoother transition between my level of detail levels. Over on the right, we can open the window on App Start. So if you have this ticked, this window will open once you start the application. If you do not have this ticked, it will automatically open in your task manager. So now let's move on to the terrain and our object level of details before we move into the FPS adaptation section. Now one thing to know about the dynamic LOD tool is this one operates a little bit differently than the other two tools that we went over. With the other two tools, they will automatically adjust your level of detail level depending on your FPS. With the dynamic LOD tool, this allows us to manually change our terrain and our object level of detail based on our AGL level. To change any of your level of details and your AGL level, all we need to do is to double click. It will populate here above, and then we can just enter the number that we would like to change it to, and then hit save. If we would like to add another AGL level that is not present, then we can just type in the AGL level that we want, type in the terrain level of detail, and then hit the add button. If you would like to delete a value, again, double click and hit the minus button, we'll delete that from you. The same method goes for the object level of detail in adding and or changing any of the detail levels. Now I just wanna go over one quick thing on the object level of detail before we move on to the adaptation section, is that you'll notice from 2,500 to 5,000 feet, I go from 175 level of detail down to 100. Now remember, when I was going over the auto FPS tool, the first one we went over, I talked about lowering your object level of detail the higher you go. So that's essentially what I'm doing here when I'm reducing the object level of detail. Now then you might say, well, wait a minute, what happens if you get into a densely populated area and then your FPS starts dropping on you. The other two tools are going to manipulate your level of detail for you to help regain some of that FPS. Well, this tool can do the exact same thing. That's why I like this one a little bit better because it is so much more customizable. If we head up to the FPS adaptation section, we have the option to limit our LODs when below a target FPS. So if you tick this box, we can then set our target FPS over on the right. Now again, you do not want to put your average FPS. You want to put a number here lower than your average FPS, but still an acceptable FPS. Below the target FPS, we have some terrain and object level of detail settings. The first setting is how much we want to reduce our terrain and object level of detail. By default, these are both set to 50. So what that means is once we dip down below my target FPS, it will then reduce both terrain level of detail and object level of detail by 50 to help regain the FPS but it's not going to reduce it any lower than what you have set here. So that's a little bit different from the other two tools. The other two tools will continually adjust it all the way down to whatever you have set as a minimum. Below this, we have a minimum terrain and object level of detail. So this is gonna be the absolute minimum that you want this tool to reduce your level of detail. So for instance, if I was at 100% terrain level of detail and I fall below 28 FPS, it will then reduce my terrain level of detail. But because I'm at 100 and I have the minimum set at 60, it's not going to reduce the terrain level of detail any lower than 60, even though I have it set to reduce it by 50 points. So I hope that makes sense, and if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. The next option that we have is the delay start or reduce four. 
So what this will do is determine when the application will start to make changes once you have gone below your FPS target. Once we go below 28 FPS, if it stays there for one second, then the application will then reduce my level of details to help increase my FPS. But it's only going to reduce those for 60 seconds or whatever you set here. The very last option that we have here is to decrease the cloud quality. So again, what this will do is it will decrease our cloud quality by one level. So if you are at high, it will reduce it to medium. If you're at ultra, it'll reduce it to high. And it will only do that once you dip down below your target FPS that we have here at the top. Now you'll also notice to the right of cloud quality is we have a cloud recovery FPS. So what that means is if we have an FPS set at, let's say 30, once our FPS in the sim gets to 30 or higher, it will then increase our cloud quality back to what we had it originally set for. All right, so I think that's gonna finish us up for today. I hope you got some good information about this and maybe this helped point you in the right direction of which tool that you would like to try first. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comment section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content and found it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everybody.